Hey everyone, this is Emily from WRSU. I'm here in Philadelphia with Amber Run, and here are the guys. They're going to introduce themselves. Hey, my name's Joe. Hi, my name's Tom. And my name is Henry. Great. Okay, so round of applause. Let's go. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so first question. Newest album came out late September, Philophobia. And um, can you guys just tell me about the process of writing and recording the album? Like, what went down? Um, so the album itself, it was probably the easiest record that we've, we've written and recorded. Um, the writing took place over a few months, um, maybe more. Uh, and we went in to a studio in the Midlands, just south of Worcester. And... Yeah, in a place called Fladbury. It was a village. It had one shop, and it only sold pies and sausages. And they had two pubs, which were next door to each other. And that's everything. And then there was a church, and that was all that the village had. Um, so we were we were living residentially in in the studio there, and we we did it in three weeks. Yeah, it was a great experience. So, um, from the latest record, do you guys have any favorite lyrics, favorite like moments in the album that like stand out to you, to you guys? In terms of in terms of uh, lyrics, I quite like the song "What Could Be as Lonely as Love." Um, I think it. I think it's just you know, well written, <laughs> if I don't say so myself, lyrically. But I think it's a really really cool song, um, and. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't put music out if we didn't think it was all pretty, pretty much all good. In fairness, but I think "What Could Be Is Lonely" is my, is my personal favorite off the record. It was quite fun to create a song. Um, you know, we felt we feel very safe in like the indie rock sphere, and so to kind of create a more kind of pop orientated alternative costume was was a real challenge, but um, also very fun to do. Yeah, because uh, I th always think the best music you create is right on the edge of your comfort zone. And that seems to have been the case for us and every other track that we've done and the songs that have done well for us. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, <clears throat> what Could Be Is Lonely, I mean, less from, a, I guess, a lyrical standpoint, but from the music, there are a couple of kind of happy accidents that kind of went on with that song to make it what it is, like literally parts that were played wrong. And then you thought oh actually that kind of works and we kind of stuck with it which kind of took the song to where it was um, that definitely songs like I Dare You were a lot of fun to just create in the studio sonically uh, really cool to to put textures and just some sonics that we wouldn't usually use um, it was just yeah, generally a lot of fun to create I would agree that I Dare You uh, for me is, is uh, musically was the most fun um, because when, when we went in we weren't really sure what we were going to do with it mm -hmm. and so um, the, the the process of, of recording that song was, was very experimental and what we came out with sort of trip hop trip hop vibe is uh, is right up my street and so yeah it was a lot of fun so um, as many fans know you guys were originally Amber mm -hmm. changed to Amber Run mm -hmm. um, if like right now something happened and you, ha you weren't Amber Run anymore. You just couldn't be Amber Run. And you guys are about to go on stage and you had to think of a new name. Do you guys have any ideas on what that name would be? The Pecan Sandies. Yeah. The Pecan Sandies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Curse these metal hands. Okay. <laughs> Chemical toilet. Great. I quite yeah. like the idea of Fruit Mountain. Fruit, Fruit Mountain. Mountain. We love it. It's a, it's a sponsorship just waiting to happen yeah. with Amber Run. Fruit. It was a hard enough process just putting run at the end of Amber, so <laughs> I'd hate to think us having to to start again. Oh my god. Just think. Run, Amber. This could be it. And I'm out. No. 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 There it is. <laughs> Heard it first here. Um, so, oh yeah, definitely. Um, so, this is the longest North American tour leg you guys have done so far as a band. And like, do you find that there's a difference between like the crowds in America versus when you're on the road in Europe? Like, anything stand out? Uh, I I would say yes. In 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 Europe, 
as in continental Europe rather than the UK. Right. Um, crowds can be, I mean, it varies from city to city. Um, crowds can be quite reserved. Um, but then again, you get some places and they go wild. Mm -hmm. In America, if people have set their minds on having a good time, then they're going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. You get a lot more sort of like random screaming in, in random points in the set. Yeah, like on yeah on the verge of heckling, it's like they're so excited that they they just want to scream something, um, which I think more um, sort of like I don't want to say polite, but more like socially conservative European people and 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 British people don't tend to do that. Um, but I mean, if people are having fun, they're having fun. So I guess I guess in the UK as well, we've we've played a lot of shows and we cut our teeth playing these places. So a lot of people have been to a lot of shows and they know what to expect of our band. Um, and so I always find the UK crowds to be the rowdiest because they know that fundamentally our live show is a rock show. Um, whereas people who have just listened to the band from afar, um, it seems that a lot of our more popular songs are more kind of ambient, um, ballad driven numbers and um so people come and expecting a kind of slow folky evening of uh sadness and what they get is something slightly different which is i think really really fun to be able to uh, change people's understanding of what you do as an artist and for them to grow to love other songs that they might not have done otherwise in a live capacity i think that's i think that's a lot of fun. that's a lot of fun yeah and we've noticed that a lot in, in the states so I know that the first songs I heard from you guys were Haze and Fickle Games, so that's completely opposite side of what the rest of the show is. We and don't, we don't. Fi Fickle Game Live is quite like a rocky, yeah. a rocky number. Like it sounds quite <coughs> chilled on on record, but it really does get to a get to a place in the live show. Um, yeah, but it's just more songs like people might not have heard stuff like. Or maybe off the new record stuff like Neon Circus and stuff like that. It's just a bona fide like that. It's just a rock song, yeah. and um, uh, some people aren't ready for it. And then you, you know, you open the set with it, and you, they kind of get hit in the face, and they're like, "What have I got myself into?" Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, are there any specific performances um, that like have a special meaning? Like something happened at this performance that just like made you realize, like, this is what I'm meant to do. Good question. Um, for me, the Rock City show that we played in Nottingham uh, on this, on this, so we did our European tour, then our UK tour, and then we're out in the US. Um, the the Rock City show that we did just just recently uh, last month was like very very special for me. Um, so going to university in Nottingham, meeting these guys in Nottingham, the band starting in Nottingham. It's it's a huge venue and it's very very important to me personally f and 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 these guys as well. And the response that we get there, they it's essentially a home crowd and and yeah, I absolutely loved it. And it's that sort of moment when you're like, ah, uh, gosh, um, uh, like this is yeah, cripes, we've we've done something here. Um, and you you rarely let yourself you really give yourself that opportunity being in a band because you you're the goalposts are always moving and you always want to push yourself further and further and you know x amount of tickets isn't enough x amount of of, of streams isn't enough and you're always constantly moving so you never give y yourself that gratification so actually being on stage and and looking out into the crowd and seeing their response um in a in a ver uh, in a place which is like special to me was yeah really important uh, because joe and i grew up together um we went to a lot of gigs growing up and I just think I always found myself going to gigs and really enjoying them but ultimately wishing I was on stage rather than in the crowd so I think it's at those points that you kind of know that that's what you want to do like I I still go to go to shows and really enjoy them but you're kind of like I wish I were playing to this crowd rather than just standing and watching you know what I mean yeah, yeah I mean these guys will tell, will tell you that I am um I love this kind of question because um, I I get that kind of feeling personally. I get that feeling all the time. And it comes in different moments in the set and it comes maybe it skips a day or, and this might sound like a real cop out, but I reckon it happens like at like 60% of the shows. Like fundamentally at least once or twice a set, 
I kind of like step outside of my own body it feels like and you just realize that you're just you're just playing music that you've written and you've just been making this stuff up like in your bedroom or in the studio and and then you realize that you're touring the world and you're getting to do new experiences meet new people and and yeah i i i get i get hung up on that stuff quite a lot so it might be a real cop out and there's not one specific thing but i reckon it's happened we played five shows in this radio i, have, I reckon it's happened to like four of them just on this mm -hmm. tour um but i'm just that kind of person so if you guys weren't chasing your dreams right now if this like wasn't possible where do you think you would be right now like at this very moment <clears throat> um i i did history at university um maybe teaching um i applied to join the army once uh, but they said no <laughs> uh yeah i was too muscular to uh, they they were like yeah um i'd yeah i'd scare the the enemy <laughs> the enemy too, the enemy would be too scared yeah exactly um yeah, but I, I, to be honest, I, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, teaching, probably teaching. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was, I was doing law at university, so I probably would have just found myself. I didn't really want to be a lawyer much, uh, but I was. That's the path I was headed on. And I was just going to kind of do it and probably be really miserable. A rich, miserable. <coughs> yeah, I'd have a lot more money. So many <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't. I can't. It's quite hard to predict. Uh, I, I, as I said, I probably would have just followed that path and ended up being sad and a lawyer. Rich, rich lawyer. Um, um, I personally didn't really give myself another option. I just said that I was going to do this, and I, there's nothing else I ever thought I would do. Um, but now, but now, yeah, mate. Apart from that, but I, I, I'm, I'm basically that, but in a band at the moment. So. Um, um now i think i think i'd quite like to be do something with food chef maybe try and make some tasty stuff you know um yeah yeah maybe work for fruit mountain that'd be a real pleasure Start fruit mountain. we love fruit mountain um okay so do you guys have any advice for musicians on like being able to pursue their dreams like you did I would honestly say that it is about dedication and time spent. Um, those who spend a lot of time and really, really want it more often than not get to a place where they have the opportunity to pursue it properly. Um, you know, just and just realize that the people that you that you look up to and that you uh, adore, obviously, are, are really talented. But on the most part, they're just making it up. Like everyone in everyone who's a musician is just making it up. No one knows what they're doing. They're just trying to create the best thing they can and ruthlessly pursuing it. Um, so I would say that the main attribute you need to have if you want to be a touring musician, a successful musician, um, is just dedication to that cause. Yeah, I don't have huge amounts of uh, of, of advice because I think there's also a lot of luck involved as well, depending on like the timing. Um, you can't predict that sort of thing. <clears throat> I, I would just say you kind of have to have a thick skin um, not necessarily because you'll just receive negative comments from people um, that that doesn't that obviously it happens it just, just whatever you're, if you're doing something creative people are going to not like it that's just what happens mm -hmm. but I mean more that just being let down by certain eventualities whatever kind of trajectory you're on there will always be things that feel like they're derailing you but whether it's a certain show that you you were promised and then you, it gets pulled out at the last minute or whatever it is you know it, it just happens it's kind of continual it's gonna sound really bad continual disappointments however small or large that you just have to realize aren't it's not a personal thing it's like it, that they, they build you up and you can get past them that's the thing you just have to be able to take a lot of disappointment obviously there's loads of non what's whatever the opposite of disappointment is that is <coughs> the counter of that being understand the, the the milestones when they happen wh however small celebrate them and know that you're on your on your way to something cool yeah sort of a mix of the two um i'd say that you need to really really want it um if there's even a part of you that doesn't want to do it then you're not going to be able to convince anyone else that it's worthwhile um because 
why should anyone give anyone's music any time unless the person who's made it really believes in it and is willing to you know be told as tom says like i don't want to listen to this a hundred times before you know the before before they do um and yeah having having a really thick skin it will it will obviously dominate your life if you're doing it as a profession um and you have to you have to be open to the fact that things aren't going to go the way you want them to sometimes um and yeah, as John said, Joe said, uh, in, enjoy it when enjoy it when you uh, when you can. Just a small, um, just hearing hearing my friends talk about it then as well. Like, um, it just dawned on me as well. If you want to make really really great music as well, that that people will react to and come back with you for, I think you've got to be willing to give you a little bit of yourself away. It can't be, it can't be, it can't be vapid. It can't be what you think people want to hear it's got to be a little you know a little shard of you that you pass away with each song that was really good advice <laughs> um so we're gonna play a quick game of never have i ever okay so first one never have i ever gotten injured on the road yeah there was one buzz yeah do you um, want to yeah, uh, we played a festival in holland and uh I do this thing that I'm pretty certain is really cool, where I do this like spinny thing and spin my arms around, and basically, it's yeah, it's so <laughs> bad. So basically, like, spun round, and like, pulled the muscles off my ribs, and then brought my arm down, and it like, cracked them. So yeah, I cracked my ribs just spinning <laughs> like a loser. Yeah, I get. I, my foot kind of hurts, but I don't know. That's not. <laughs> yeah, we're on the road. Yeah, your your back will always hurt if you're on the road, um, just because. Uh, I last time we were in America, I got um, ruthlessly beaten up. Um, it was after we played our New York show, and yeah, pff, I mean, alcohol was involved. But I woke up and my shins were just like bloody, scabby pulps. Um, and I've actually still got a scar, which you can see there. <laughs> So you can see that there. That's a scar from from this time last year when my shins got kicked in. Uh, so that was probably the worst injury that I've had. Next one. Um, never have I ever won over a crowd that just like wasn't on your side. You know, we haven't done many. <laughs> we haven't done that many support shows and stuff. So on the most part, we have done a lot of headline shows. So on the mo uh, people have paid to paid to be there. There's definitely moments where people are standing there wanting to be impressed. They're not there to enjoy themselves. They're there to hear what the, the what the crack is like, whether you're any good or not. And um, I definitely feel like we've got them there. Again, as we said earlier in the interview, I think people expect quite a different live show than what we give. Um, and so I think it's quite easy to, to turn them onto it because we give a lot of energy and passion to our live show. We're really proud of it. So I would suggest that we do that quite a lot, <laughs> hopefully anyway. Yeah. Next one. Never have I ever gotten a bad tattoo. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> is, that, is this a buzz? You can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can be the judge of it. I'm the only one in the band with tattoos. Okay. Uh, I have two of them. Mm -hmm. um, I've got this one here. It's a uh, Aksumite cross from northern Ethiopia. Um, my uh, mother works out in Ethiopia sometimes, uh, like sometimes of the year. And uh, she used to bring these back for me. And I always used to wear them. And then one, one day when I was like 19, 20, it fell off. Uh, and I was like, oh, screw it, I'm just going to get it tattooed on me. And the other one is on my ribs over here. And um, it's, re <laughs> it's really bad. No, it's, I, I, I really like it. Um, and uh, that's a... It's a bit of a long story, but basically I did my dissertation about this uh, Greek comedian called Aristophanes and um, and his, his, his plays. And in Plato's symposium, he talks about sexuality and um, whether it's right or... Well, Plato talks about whether they're discussing it, all, the, all, the, all these uh, Greeks. And um, they're discussing whether it's right to be heterosexual, whether it's wrong to be heterosexual or homosexual. And some people were saying men and men should only hook up and women are just for procreation and some are saying it's completely against God or the gods to, to, to be gay. Aristophanes stands up and tells this story and essentially this is a little little thing from that. And it's it's uh 
for those at home who can't see it, it's a man and a woman back to back, but they're like stuck together. Yeah, those aren't bad tattoos. I think I think that the whole band should get Fruit Mountain tattooed though. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think I mean, that I think that's yeah. the next bonding yeah. exercise. I mean, the amount of times, the amount of times that we've said that we'll get Amber Run tattoos and then bail is yeah. just mm -hmm. disgraceful. Yeah. But it's like it's like wearing your own band's merch, isn't it? It's just yeah. like it's a bad look. What about you? No, no, actually, my my parents would kill me if I got a tattoo. At the That's what I thought. I'll eventually get there. Sorry, That's mom and dad. This this was my first one, and because it, it was the, the the cross was a, my first one, I was positive that my parents would kick the um, but the the, kick the heck out of me. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the shins incident again. Um, but I think my mum was pleasantly surprised because uh, it was regarding her and. And the the faith that she brought me up in. So, uh, so you need to get an I love mum tattoo and make sure you love it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, like sailors yeah. used to have, like with the yeah. heart and the anchor and mum. The arrow through it, yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. As lame as possible. Yeah, got it. Um, okay, last one. Um, never have I ever had a crazy fan encounter. I mean, we're, we're quite lucky. We have, we have lots of very, very kind and lovely fans. But some, some, people, some people do overstep the mark slightly. I had some stuff to the house and stuff like that, which is a bit fruity. But, you know, on the most part, people are really nice. Um, but I think sometimes people forget because you have to put so much of your life up on social media. And personally, in our band, we put so much of our emotional baggage out <laughs> into the world with our music. People be believe they know you. And so, yeah. Oh, there was also that one the other night where some, some older ladies were doing a lot of touching, which I wasn't such a fan of personally. But... Obviously, as a man, I don't have that as badly as ladies probably do. Well, definitely do. And, um, yeah, that wasn't so fun. So I'm really sorry for ladies everywhere. That pretty much wraps it up for me. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. It was great. Studio audience, Studio audience is clapping. Yes.